The Oklahoma City Thunder have become very accustomed to wheeling and dealing here over the past five years, and I actually saw a baseball YouTuber do a video about this. So today we're going to be looking at the insane trade history of the Oklahoma City Thunder, how they went from this team to this team to now having one of the brightest young cores in the NBA around Shea Gilgis Alexander, Josh Giddy, Jalen Witt. I mean, the list goes on and on, and it's all due to this man right here. Sam Presti. So before we get started, make sure you hit the like button and leave me a comment down below on today's video if you do enjoy at any point. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button. A large majority of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed, and we need to put a change to that. I uh, need to end unsubscription. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Just go hit that subscribe button if you do enjoy today's video at any point. Now let's go ahead and get started. I mean, where do we really start? We're only going five years back because if we tried to go any further, it'd just be insane. The video would be 20 minutes long because Sam Bresti loves to make trades. We'll start at the 2019 NBA draft, uh, which kicks us off with Brandon Clark being traded for Darius Baisley plus a 2024 second round pick. Um, this was a draft night trade and definitely worked out better for the Memphis Grizzlies than the OKC Thunder. Um, and that 2024 second round pick has not been used yet. So now, the rebuild begins with this Oklahoma City Thunder team um, where Jeremy Grant is flipped for a first round pick from Denver. Um, he would then, of course, ball out in Denver for a year, go on to sign with the Detroit Pistons and now is a Portland Trailblazer. Um, and then that first round pick was used in the Poku trade, which we will get to later in today's video. Then, the first big domino to fall was Paul George, uh, who in a blockbuster deal, everybody knows, was sent to the Los Angeles Clippers. In my opinion, with the Clippers not winning a championship, the Thunder clearly won this deal. They got the best player in this deal for the last probably two seasons because Paul George just can't stay healthy. Shea Gilgis Alexander, I think for the last two years, he's been better than Paul George. I think we can agree upon that. If you'd like to debate it, go down in the comments below. I'll be ready. Um, they also got a 2022 first-round pick, a 2024 first-round pick, a 2026 first-round pick, Miami's 2021 first-round pick, and then a pick swap in 2023 and 2025. That is six first-round picks if you are counting up at home. All for this man, Paul George. And the Clippers have not won an NBA championship yet and are in dire straits right now. And then Westbrook was the next chip to fall. He was sent to Houston in exchange for Chris Paul to see if the... Harden-Westbrook combination could go well together. It did not. Um, and in exchange, the Thunder got protected first-round picks in 2024 and 2026 and pick swaps in 2021 and 2025. The next pick we have here is a relatively minor one as Justin Patton and Cash were traded for Isaiah Roby. Now, this 2019-2020 team was really good. People forget this was the bubble year. They were good under Billy Donovan. 44-28 and were a Lou Dort non-blocked shot away from going to the second round. Uh, but then they decided, all right, it's time to hit the rebuild button. They send Chris Paul off to Phoenix, where Phoenix goes all in, trying to win an NBA championship, um, bringing back a pick, as well as Ricky Rubio and Kelly Oubre Jr. Uh, both of those players would get traded later on, as we will see in this video. Um, Dennis Schroeder is sent off to L.A. in exchange for Danny Green and the draft rights to Jaden McDaniels. Again, both of those guys would be traded, as we will get to later in this video. Schroeder worked out well in L.A. They won a championship. Um, he's now back for his second stint in L.A. after getting traded around. And then the Poku trade, the aforementioned Poku trade, um, where they sent two second-round picks um, to the Timberwolves. Um, and then, or The Timberwolves sent them two second-round picks for Rubio, McDaniels, and then Poku um, was... Traded to the Oklahoma City Thunder as a part of that move up in that deal. Um, and then they trade Kelly Oubre Jr. to the Golden State Warriors for a 2021 first-round pick and two second-round picks. That trade didn't really work out the greatest for the Warriors because, of course, Steph would get hurt that year, and then Kelly Oubre would go on to sign with the Charlotte Hornets. He is now a free agent. Um, not sure where he's going to go. We'll probably see after the whole Dame Domino falls. We will see. Um, then Kendrick Williams and a few other guys were traded uh, to Oklahoma City, as well as a pick in two seconds for Steven Adams to the New Orleans Pelicans. That was also kind of included in the Drew Holiday, Eric Bledsoe swap, but that is extremely complicated and I couldn't figure that one out. Um, and then Danny Green was traded uh, for Al Horford and a first round pick to Philadelphia. Um, 
Yeah, there's so much trading. The deconstruction of this roster was kind of crazy. Uh, and they also got Teo Maladon in that deal. And then later on, they would trade Kimball Walker, or they would trade for Kimball Walker, send Al Horford to Boston, and they got a first-round pick in return for that. So, you know, you're seeing all these first-round picks accumulated. This was the rebuild phase. They send a second-round pick to Utah, get Derek Favors and a first-round pick back. Favors, you know, is Derek Favors. He wasn't really going to make that big of an impact on the Thunder anyway. They were rebuilding, so he was just kind of a piece. They just absorbed that contract. But that 2024 Jazz pick that they got in that trade is looking like a big-time piece right now because the Jazz, a little iffy. Then on draft night, they trade Jeremiah Robinson Earl for Miles McBride. Interesting trade, but, you know, I mean, doesn't really matter. And then they also trade uh, Jermichael Green for the draft rights to Peyton Watson. I believe they also got a first round, or they got, yeah, they got a first round pick in that um, as well. And then the blockbuster where all these picks that they've been accumulating, they finally decide, all right, it's, 20, it's the 2022 NBA draft. We got a chance here. We just picked up Jalen Williams. Let's go out and get Usman Jiang for three future first-round picks that are all protected. Uh, and we're going to try and go out and swing for the fences here at number 12 and get us an absolute stud. Actually, it was number 11. So they trade three first-round picks. They bring in Usman Jiang. We can't really grade that one yet because, of course, it was in last year's draft and Jiang was really hurt the whole year. Um, then this offseason and basically or this trade deadline and really a meaningless move, they sent Baisley to the Suns for Sarch. They do pick up a second-round pick in that deal, but Sarge is now a Golden State Warrior. Great pickup for the Warriors, uh, but for the Thunder, that trade doesn't really pay any dividends. And then finally, we are up to this year's draft, where Kaysen Wallace becomes an Oklahoma City Thunder, while Davis Bertans is as well, and then Lively goes to the Dallas Mavericks. Really, the Mavericks traded back, but also gave up Bertans. Um, so that the Thunder could pick up their guy in case on Wallace. And I think that's a good pick. I mean, you just go out. This, that's what the Thunder team has been built on. It's just guys that know how to win. Um, the final trade here we'll, that we'll talk about was the most recent. And Patty Mills being sent to Atlanta for Uzman Garuba. Tata Washington, a second-round pick, and Rudy Gay. And then I think Rudy Gay got cut. But, yeah, Sam Presti, at, at the least, has been wheeling and dealing Big time here lately. I mean, they went from this squad with Russ, PG, Steven Adams, Jeremy Grant, and then that 2019-20 team, which was really good, to now having Shea, Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, Jalen Williams, and Chet Holmgren, which is the best young lineup in the NBA. I'm ready to argue anybody with that down in the comments below. Um, I think Lou Dort's the only dude on here over the age of 23. And Giddy's like 21, Jalen Williams is 21, Chet's like 20. Th this team is so young. They're going to be so good for the next few years. They have so much cap space. It's just set up beautifully. The bench is good. They got guys like Kaysen Wallace, Trey Mann, the dude they just brought in from overseas, um, Isaiah Joe. I'm forgetting like four or five guys. Poku, uh, Giang. I'm forgetting like four or five guys too, like I said. And they have all the cap space in the world. And then look at the picks they have. They have the Clippers, the Rockets, their own, and Utah's picks in next year's draft, although some of those will be protected. 2025, they had their own, a pick swap there between the Rockets and Clippers. Miami, Philadelphia, 2026, they have a few. So you see all these picks that they've been trading for throughout this video. And, I mean, yeah, this is actually kind of insane. Uh, the amount of trades that they have made, it's crazy. Yeah, the, Sam Presti has done such a beautiful job of crafting this team, building this squad. So much talent has passed through Oklahoma City, honestly, in the last 10 years. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. That was a look back at the crazy trade history of the Oklahoma City Thunder here over the last five years. Shout out to the baseball content creator that made the video um, that gave me the idea. Just put a little basketball spin on it. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, thanks so much for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment down below. And with all that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video.